And we're back for another episode. In this episode, we're going to be continuing the main scenario of Stormblood. And as always, hello from Ifri. So we are here at um, 1925 in the Fringes. So let's talk to Conrad. The quest is called Rising Fortunes, Rising Spirits. Conrad would like just as much as you to resume your march eastwards towards the peaks. So, I know you're not one for waiting, but if you'll bear with us. Commander Kemp, Marshal Turpin reports that their sweep of the Castellum's interior has been completed. So it's finally over, eh? Pray extend to him my deepest thanks. So it's official then. Castellum Valadin is well and truly ours. Mayhap this calls for... Wait, where is Monago? She took her bird and flew off towards the Peering Stones, the village of the M tribe where she was born. I doubt that the Imperials who fled Valadin had a mind to give them trouble on the way back east, but she was nevertheless worried, so I gave her leave to go and see her people were safe. So though I pray you are right, it would be best if Monago were not alone if she should encounter the enemy. Agreed. Let's all go to the Peering Stones and make sure that everything is alright. Okay. So if that is your wish, then I've no objection. Just let the guard know when you wish to cross. No, 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 no. Okay, so let's talk to the resistance guard. So, greeting Scion, do you wish to pass? Yes, I do. Nice. So, we're finally at the other side of the fringes. So, let's go to the peering stones. Let's go up here. Oh, wow. It's even more desolate than the first half. Lol. What level are the monsters around here? Assuming 67 plus. Let's take a look. Yep, yeah, 67 plus, exactly. Okay, there's Vijala. To be honest, you would have thought if she has like a flying griffin or whatever, that she could have just flown home any time. We have a fate here, which I'll get back to another time. Especially when there's NPCs involved. Anyway, so here is Lee's. Let's talk to her. So the path to the village is through a tunnel just east of here. Follow me. There we go. Where's... Tunnel, tunnel. Is this a tunnel? No, is this just a path? Ah, there we go. I. M Tribe Ranger. Cool. I do always wonder in terms of game design. Like, how long it takes you to develop these sort of worlds. Okay, here's the Aetherite. Let's attune to it. Before we carry on. Alright. Let's talk to Monago. Ah, you've come. Welcome, friends, to my village. My home. How fare your people? Good, all things considered. Better than the Enanta at any rate. They've sent an emissary. 
I'll take you to her. Okie dokie. We're here to help. Will you tell us what happened? Yep. Aye. It began with a quarrel between the Imperials and the Kaliana. The Kaliana are another Ananta tribe. The strongest and the most influential. Unlike the Vera, they want no part of our troubles. They swore fealty to the Empire and were content to remain within their borders. Just so. The Kaliana forsook their pride in the fight and yielded to Garlemald long ago. But then a new commander was sent to hold the Black Bridge. She demanded the Kaliana surrender a hostage, this butcher. Poor Dola. It doesn't make sense, though. The Vera are the ones working with the Resistance. Why would she threaten the Kaliana? Because she is ignorant like all Imperials. She knows not the difference between Kaliana and Vera, nor does she care to learn. I see. All Fadola knew for sure was that the Resistance would come from the West. She reasoned, therefore, that if the Ananta on the East Bank turned their coats, she would be trapped. I take it the Kaliana had no choice but to oblige her. No, they did not. The Imperials left with the Kaliana Broodmother's own daughter, Anamika. Long days and nights she looked out on the Black Bridge weeping for her child. Until you came. The brood mother knew at once which way the winds would blow. She and her warriors met with the fleeing Imperials in the road and demanded that her daughter be returned. Bad idea. Fordola's not the kind to take threats lying down. You know her well. The Butcher turned her blade to Anamika and bade the Kaliana move aside. But the Brood Mother would not yield. I know where this is going. They settled it over a game of Jenga. The Kaliana surrounded the Imperials, one of whom, whether out of fear or stupidity, cut the child down. There was naught that could be done. What madness. Well, I guess she lost. The true madness was yet to come. For in her despair, the Kaliana broodmother cried out for her daughter to be restored to life. She beseeched Sri Lakshmi's intercession. Interesting. She summoned a primal then and there? That she did, if only for an instant. Bereft of courage and honor, the broodmother sought solace in her faith. The Imperials fled in terror at the sight of the goddess, abandoning these lands to the Ananta. Now the Kaliana bid us make pilgrimage to pay proper respects. Yet though we Vera revere Sri Lakshmi as the holiest of the holy, we will not prostrate ourselves before her. And so you turn to us? Aye. All who have fought with the Resistance have heard tell of the warrior, the Icon Slayer. <laughs> Whoops. Wasn't me. What are you looking at me for? I'm innocent. I believe we have heard enough. Inconvenient though the timing may be, 
If a primal has indeed been summoned, we can scarce afford to ignore it. We must needs discuss how best to resolve this situation. Cool. That's complete. Right. So let's talk to Master Alphanode. So the quest is called The Law of the Dream. Alphanode has heard this story too many times before. So, hum, at the risk of sounding hopelessly naive, there may yet be a way to avoid a violent confrontation. In the past, I fear I have been rather too willing to accept that we have no other recourse than to risk our lives, or rather your life, to address these threats. Yet the primals we have faced thus far have demonstrated a variety of temperaments and objectives. Ravana may delight in battle, but Ramu would sooner keep to the forest with his children. Here we decide to challenge uh, Sri Lakshmi, um, it would seem wise to learn more of her nature from those who summoned her onto this world. If that is your will, then so be it. To the north, you will find our village, uh, Sarisha. Um, shall unfold all. What shall... Sorry, we shall leave at once, Manago. Can you inform our comrades at the bridge of what happened? Of course. Be safe, my friends. Okie dokie. Let's do it. Right. So we need to go to there. So let's do it. We yes, blood. Let's try not to get into combat while falling, because that'd be awkward. Okay, so we need to go that way. So I'm sure there was a better way to go, like a zip line or something, but whatever. Nearly there. At the village. Ooh, an Aether Current. Interesting. I will do all the Aether Currents when I finish the main story of the game. Then I'll unlock flying in all zones. It's like, hello! Bonjour! I'm here to sell... nothing. Timeshare? Anyone want a timeshare? Let's talk to Sarisha. So, we do not often receive guests. What is the purpose of your visit? Greetings are well met. We are the signs of the seventh dawn, and we come seeking Sarisha of the Vera. You are she, are you not? You have petitioned us for aid and succor, and we intend to provide them. But we would first learn more of Lakshmi, that we might better understand the nature of the threat she poses to you. A simple request, and one which I shall gladly oblige. In the beginning was Lakshmi. We were created in her image. Daughters blessed with her beauty. Her breath came became ours. Her serenity our solace. There is naught she would not give. Huh. So it was the Qualyana broodmother's desire to bring about her daughter's resurrection, which first called upon sorry called forth Lakshmi from the Aether. That being the case, I rather doubt the goddess will be spoiling for a fight. That would depend. The primal's motives will have been coloured by the summoner's state of mind, namely that of a grieving mother who had just borne witness to her daughter's murder. Though she apparently craved a miracle, she may also have harboured thoughts of vengeance. Moreover, the Kalyana's conception of Lakshmi may differ from that of the Vera. That is, this is true. The Vera and the Kalyana do indeed regard the Lady of Bliss in different ways. To the Vera, Lakshmi embodies freedom. She will not suffer her daughters to be bound to another's will. And so we stand with the resistance against the Empire, and we give our lives for the cause. To the Kalyana, however, she embodies transcendental beauty, 
which they strive to create through their craft. To shape crystal to is less art and more ritual, a sacred duty wherein each tribute is imbued with a fragment of the soul. The Imperials did not interfere with this holy work, and so the Kalyana were content to turn inwards and ignore our plight. Until reality asserted itself and they summoned a primal, a fever dream to soothe their aching hearts. But surely they can see that it won't do any good. The Imperials will still rule these lands. Nothing will change. The Anatta will. The Kalyana bade the Vera make pilgrimage to pay proper respects, remember? Those who do not wish to partake of their primal's bliss will be made to do so. Not while we're around, they won't. Though our beliefs are not the same, we are still kin to the Kalyana. Will you help them to see reason? Now on us. No, that'll kill your god if I have to. Maybe even if I don't. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what Mifri would say. Totally. So, then we shall. For without you, we may be powerless to stop them. If we do not act quickly, more lives will be lost. More families torn apart. More children made to suffer. Then it's settled. We're going to find that primal and put an end to this. My sister Vajra will guide you to Dajnan Kot, and I shall pray for your success. So we are heading towards Lakshmi now. Okay, so let's complete. So well met, Scions. I am Vajra, she who shines bright and unbroken. I stand ready. We'll leave upon your command. Okay. Next. So the quest is called the Lady of Bliss. Vajra is ready to guide you to Dajnan Kat. You are ready, hmm? You look ready. Dajnan Kat, there you find uh, Kalyana's crystals and Sheer Lakshmi. Follow me. Interesting. We're finally doing the second primal of the expansion. Right, so I need to go that way. Oh, sorry, that's a mountain. So let's go around it if we can. Okay. And I will make a group, and I'll get this done ASAP. I, I am curious, like, how much longer is left of the story, because... Um, we're working through the second half of the fringes now, as you can see. Then we need to go back towards the east, towards the Twin Peaks. We, I think we went the wrong way. Um, then we need to... Um, what's it called? I'm not actually sure which way I need to go. Maybe through the village. Um, then we need to go to the, I think the last zone in the expansion, which is called the Locks. And given that I'm already approaching, like, level... Like, what level is this quest? Level 67. So, there can't be that many quests left, to be honest. From what I've seen, at least. But it has definitely been a great journey so far. Definitely worth, you know, the money, given the amount of time I've spent in this expansion already. Okay. Don't dismount me, don't dismount me. Fair enough. Okay, so you have to go to the other side of the village. Okay, so Lady of Bliss. Okay, we're almost there now. There we go. Let's talk to Vajra. Thankfully, they said the leech time in this, the leech distance in this expansion is very short. There's Vajra. So, Dajna Court. The, this path leads to an entrance above. Within is an aetherite. You must use it to enter. Understood. With me, everyone. I wonder if one day they'll add, like, a solo primal, primal instance. Uh, that would be quite cool. 
I mean, I'm not talking about going back and doing unsync of the old primals. I mean, one that's actually designed for single player combat. Wow, these mobs are flipping massive. There would be a flipping S rank round. Well, I don't even for S rank, or just. It's a big flipping mob, so let's assume it is an S rank. Especially because it attacks upon sight, it doesn't do. Okay, let's go this way. The reason these are hostile is because they're obviously controlled by Lakshmi. Here it is. Ooh, very pretty. So tune to the A for right. Was there a Aetherite in that town? No, there isn't. Okay. Hello, lady. Look thee on her face, supplicant. Thy prayer hath been answered. Flesh sundered hath been made whole. Blood spilt runneth through her veins. Breath stolen filleth her breast. But she hears not her mother's words, nor sees her mother's face. She... she is silent. And empty. Only the vessel may be remade. Not so the flame which flickered within. Her soul hath been scattered to the four winds. Now do you see her promises for what they are? Alizé, have you gone mad? Mayhap I have, but I refuse to stand by and watch yet another tragedy unfold. Who intrudes upon this sacred ground? Imperials, thirsting for blood! No! We come not to shed blood, but to save you from the false god who would lead you astray. I understand how you feel. I do. You loved her with all your heart, but when the moment came, you still couldn't save her. The anguish, the anger, I know it only too well. But I also know where this path leads. To embrace a primal is to condemn yourself to an endless cycle of despair. You will never know peace. A worm-eaten heart may find peace and serenity in service, in beauty and grace. This hath ever been my promise, naught else. You tempt them with visions of things that can never be and leave them bereft and wanting. No illusion, however sweet, can change the fact that your daughter is gone. Remember her as she was. Do not suffer this piteous shade to tarnish her memory. For every prayer that primal answers, it'll demand payment in kind. Do you have any idea how many more Ananta will die to feed its hunger for crystals? They would have thee suffer man's spite and live in fear. Far better to dwell in my beauteous dream than endure so ugly a reality. Totally. She's wrong! We hate the Empire as much as you, if you just listen! Poor misguided children. 
I would spare you the torments of this cruel and misshapen world. Come, bask in my radiance. Let it fill your hearts and free you from your burdens. I have the power. <laughs> Abide in misery then, fools. The Ananta are more deserving of my blessing. Leave these lands and my dreamers be. I will not warn you a second time. Cool. So now let's talk to Elise. So I know, I know, it was stupid and foolish, but I have to try. Mithri, I had to. I had to try, but I failed. So you have to fight. There is no other way. I'll wake them from the dream. Never stop trying. Probably wasn't going to be suffered to live, you know this. Never stop trying. It means a lot to hear you say that. It does. But it doesn't make it any easier to have to ask you to face that, that thing. We can but do that which is within our power. Lise, Alphanod, and I will go and seize uh, crystal stores. That This will not happen again. And you, when it is finished, we will be waiting for you. Cool. So emanation is now accessible. Nice. So I'm assuming that this is one of those zones... That will only get to this like one time ever for this like story. Not unless we can get. Oh, it's an exit. Okay, M maybe we can go back and forth from here. It's a it's a pretty zone. Otherwise, it would be a shame if we can't come back just for the sake of visiting. So anyway, guys, that's it for this episode. We're gonna obviously do Lakshmi next. So thank you very much for watching, and as always, goodbye from me and goodbye from Mifri. Bye, guys. <laughs>